This DeSantis wasn't wrong, but we're so tribal now, the left will overlook child if the guy from the wrong party calls it out. You just got a small taste of an insane new rules segment from Bill Maher, and the longer it goes on, the worse it gets, and it gets really bad. Now, I already knew that Bill Maher was gone, but it really wasn't until that clip that I realized, oh, he's gone, gone. Like, there's no coming back. His brain has completely rotted to the point where he's now just a standard anti-Trump Republican, which isn't necessarily surprising because he's a wealthy white dude who's never worked a real job a day in his life. So it's not shocking to see him become increasingly fascistic in his old age. But still, the rhetoric here is bad, even by Bill Maher's standards, even like by 20... 20 era plus Bill Maher standards because he's going to accuse the left of supporting child abuse and give DeSantis credit for being against child abuse. Now, in order to get to this point, he makes a lot of logical leaps based on a fictionalized caricature of the left that he made up in his head. And he concludes by essentially arguing that the fascists were actually right about LGBTQ plus people being groomers. So he starts by uh, talking about shocking revelations detailed in the documentary Quiet on Set, which talks about the sexual exploitation of the Nickelodeon child stars that a lot of us grew up with. Now, I found um, the allegations from this utterly appalling. I haven't watched the documentary yet, but I've heard about it. And it's disturbing. It's sad, right? Most people, I think, regardless of their political affiliation, reacted to the documentary in the same way, with disgust. But that doesn't stop Bill Maher from making it a partisan point while contradictorily saying how bad partisan bias is. It's just confusing, but let's watch. So I don't know if this documentary is the talk of your town, but it is out here because it didn't just expose a dangerous workplace. It also exposed hypocrisy because... It must be pointed out that when the evil governor of Florida was saying the exact same thing about kids and creepy stuff at Disney that liberals now find intolerable at Nickelodeon, he was dismissed as a hick and a bigot. But why would a kids content factory like Disney be all that different than the one at Nickelodeon? So the implication is the left criticized DeSantis for accusing Disney of sexualizing kids. Therefore, they must automatically approve of the sexualization of children. Now, maybe that's persuasive if you have no additional context, but it's a disingenuous argument because he's stripping away the context. DeSantis only accused Disney of sexualizing kids after they begrudgingly condemned his don't say gay law. Now, I say begrudgingly because Disney only condemned the law after they faced backlash because they funded the campaigns of Republican lawmakers in Florida who wrote that law. But after they condemned the law, that's when DeSantis accused them of sexualizing kids. Now, in response, Disney CEO Bob Iger said the notion that Disney is in any way sexualizing children, quite frankly, is preposterous and inaccurate. Now, DeSantis then responded on Twitter with a video of a Disney executive supposedly advocating for the sexualization of children. And specifically, this is what she said that he says was sexualization of children. I'm, I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually, um, uh, one transgender child um, um, and one pansexual child, um, and, and also as a leader. We have many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories, and, and, and yet we don't have enough leads um, and narratives in which Gay characters just just get to be characters um, and, and not have to be about gay stories. And going forward, um, I, I certainly will be more so. I know that we will be. And um, and I hope this is a moment where shoot um, the 50 percent of the tears. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> are coming. Um, uh, we don't. We just don't allow each other to go backwards. So this lady is saying, as a mother of two queer children, our content hasn't been the most representative of LGBTQ plus people, and we're going to correct that. So this smoking gun DeSantis provided doesn't prove Disney is sexualizing children. In fact, to believe that that is indeed the case, you have to buy into the narrative that mere representation is tantamount to sexualizing children. But if it's true for queer characters, it also must be true for straight characters as well. So if a character with two mommies is tantamount to sexualization, then so too is a character with a mommy and a daddy. 
if a character that's trans is inherently sexual, the same must be true for a cis character, right? This all stems from the idea that exposure to queer people influences someone to be gay or trans, but that's not how it works. Furthermore, if you're saying that queer representation is tantamount to the sexualization of children, you're effectively running cover for actual pedophiles by downplaying actual sexual exploitation of children. But Marr does bring up legitimate issues with Disney, and these are issues that DeSantis didn't mention, but yet he still gives DeSantis credit even though DeSantis did not mention any of this in his accusations that Disney was sexualizing children. A 2014 CNN report discovered that at least 35 Disney employees had been arrested for sex crimes against children. And in 2021, Disney child star Allison Stoner confessed she only narrowly survived the toddler to train wreck pipeline. The next year, child star Cold Sprouse told the New York Times that young actresses at the Disney Channel were heavily sexualized from an early age. You know, Willie Sutton said he robbed banks because that's where the money is. And the reason we find pedophiles in the Boy Scouts and the Rectory and Kids TV is that's where the kids are. <laughs> De DeSantis wasn't wrong, but we're so tribal now. The left will overlook child fucking if the guy from the wrong party calls it out. After Brian Peck, who was one of the lead creeps at Nickelodeon, served 16 months in prison for the molesting he did there, Disney hired him, naturally to work on a children's series. So according to Bill Maher, the left would be critical of DeSantis if he hypothetically chose to call any of those negative things about Disney out, but he didn't. And that's not his criticism of Disney. His criticism of Disney and his allegations of sexual exploitation of children is very different. If DeSantis chose to call out any of that, I think that every single leftist would agree with him. Because I think it is alarming and incredibly irresponsible of Disney to hire this person. And of course, there should be an external investigation into them because it wouldn't surprise me if the same stuff that went on at Nickelodeon also went on at Disney. But... Apparently, uh, DeSantis is the hero here and we're the villains because he said Disney is sexualizing children. But even though he meant it in a different way, since we criticized him for his way, we're bad and we support that. It's just it's so convoluted, you know, when it comes to the argument that he's making here. But what's ironic about this is that DeSantis didn't just ignore all of that. He threw gay people under the bus and effectively ran cover for actual pedophiles like Brian Peck by making it seem like an innocent mom who just wants more representation for her queer children at Disney is the real problem when there's literal pedophiles like Brian Peck working for the company. Like, if he called that out, I don't think anyone would be criticizing him. We would all agree that that's bad and egregious. But we all know that DeSantis doesn't really care about sexualizing kids. He just hates queer people. But in order to believe that DeSantis was speaking out against the sexualization of children at Disney, one would also have to buy into the premise that queer people pose a danger to children. And the question is, does Bill Maher do that? And the answer, unfortunately, is yes, explicitly so. Bill Maher is going to unironically argue that queer people being in the presence of children is inappropriate. So he brings up how the left is hypocritical because they're against child beauty pageants, but for drag queen story hour, which is bad in his opinion. And then he goes on to basically say that this is all an effort to make kids gay and trans. I'm not making this up. Let's watch. Not that there's anything wrong with being a drag queen, but maybe it's time to admit that sometimes drag queen story hour is more for the queen than the kids. <laughs> Sure, kids love a clown, but does the clown have to have tits? <laughs> and when I see a five-year-old tipping, tipping at a bar under a sign that says it's not going to lick itself, do I have to pretend that's cool in order to keep my liberal ID card? But at a certain point, inclusion becomes promotion. That's why endlessly talking about gender to six-year-olds isn't just inappropriate. It's what the law would call entrapment, suggesting someone into something they wouldn't otherwise do. And if you think that some of that isn't going on with gender in schools, you're not watching enough TikTok videos. I pledge allegiance to the queers. I'm not allowed to be out as trans non-binary at school. So my response to this is to be as obnoxiously queer as possible. 
There's a certain kind of activist these days who wants to take heterosexuality, old school, old fashioned, boring, minding its own business heterosexuality, and lump it in with patriarchy and sexism and racism and tell kids, wouldn't it be cool if you were anything but that? It also seems to be the theme of kind of a lot of kids' books these days. I never used the phrase gay agenda because I thought it was mostly nonsense, and it is, mostly. But a director for Disney Television Animation did say after she was hired. The showrunners were super welcoming to like my like not at all secret gay agenda. Like I was just wherever I could, just basically adding queerness. No one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. Look, I'm all for adding queerness wherever. I put some in my drink before I came out here tonight. <laughs> But maybe we should think about giving kids a break from our culture wars for a minute, or at least until the election is over. But here's the thing, Bill. Gay and trans people aren't making political statements by simply existing. And the only reason why it's a culture war is because conservatives are trying to erase us from the culture by fear-mongering about the danger we supposedly pose to kids. But inclusion and representation is an attempt to remedy the bigotry that queer people experience in society. That's why people with queer children, like that lady at Disney, is saying, I want to include more queer characters because I want my kids to know that they're normal, that they're seen. Like, I don't scoff at heterosexuality every time I see it on the TV, which is literally every time I turn on the television, because I don't think less of straight people. I don't think, man, I, I don't wanna see that. The only reason why you would oppose representation is because you see inclusion of queer people as abnormal, right? And you're prejudiced against them. Now, it seems like that's now the case with Bill Maher. He views homosexuality and trans identities as like, some sort of statement and not just who people are right but let's go through the entirety of that clip because he makes a lot of terrible arguments first and foremost he objects to drag queen story hour because drag queens have tits okay well i mean i guess that you can choose to remedy the situation by just not taking your kids to drag queen story hour it's not mandatory right you don't have to take your kids to these events but why is that inherently harmful or sexual? Why are drag queens a danger to kids? He doesn't make that point. Some parents choose to take their children to drag queen story hour because they want their children to be taught that acceptance and tolerance is good, that people who society deems as weird should be accepted. That's why I would imagine they would take their kids to an event, but it's completely optional. He also brings up the kids tipping uh, drag queens with the it's not going to lick itself sign. And the fact that he even brought this up is so astonishing to me because he's three years late to the party on this. And aside from that, there wasn't a single person on his entire staff that did a five second Google search to learn that the it's not going to lick itself sign is a tagline of a literal ice cream company, Cauldron Ice Cream, who was catering the event. I mean, nobody thought, hey, hmm, maybe we should look into this. Now, look, out of context, I think that that sign was inappropriate myself, but we have the context now. That story is extremely old. But the reason why he brought that up is because it leads people to be more suspicious of queer people, which is what he wants. He wants you to think that queer inclusion is tantamount to promotion and even entrapment. But in making this point, he's implicitly accepting the right's argument that being gay or trans is inherently a choice when it's not. You can't entice children into being gay or trans any more than you can entice them into being straight or cis. You either are or you aren't. If it were a choice, nobody would be gay or trans because all that we see is hetero and cisnormativity in every single fucking facet of our society and culture. Now, people who imply that it is a choice could test that out. Bill Maher could put himself in a situation where he's enticed by homosexuality and suck a guy off, or he can dress up as a woman for a year and see if after enough time he starts to like it. Odds are he wouldn't like it and he'd never feel comfortable in clothes of the opposite gender because that's just not who he is. And what's sad is I shouldn't have to explain any of this to Bill Maher because these are arguments he's made himself as a longtime LGBTQ plus ally. But he's even fear mongering about the gay agenda now by citing a video of a Disney executive half seriously saying that she has a not at all secret gay agenda because she's trying to add as much queer representation as she possibly can in Disney shows. How scandalous. In other words, the gay agenda is effectively more representation.
Ooh, how scary. By that logic, you can argue that Bill Maher has a straight agenda since he's in favor of more straight representation as opposed to gay and cis representation. But buying into the idea that a gay agenda exists at all is kind of this like Trojan horse, because like once you accept that premise, you then believe that the reason why there's this agenda is because they're coming for the kids and they want to turn kids gay, yada, yada, so on and so forth. It's the classic gay predator myth. And it is a low IQ argument used by conservatives to galvanize evangelicals. But for some reason, it works on Bill Maher, who is not an evangelical, who's been at odds with evangelicals for most of his life. But all of a sudden he's saying, mm, maybe they had a point all these decades ago, and I'm only realizing it now. It's just, it's so ridiculous. But remember, at the beginning, he argued that the left was in favor of child fucking because DeSantis came out against it. The examples that he proved debunked his own argument. He never demonstrates that. But contrary to the argument he's making, the left is not in favor of child sex abuse and child exploitation. I've never seen a single pro-child sex abuse leftist ever. And Twitter is a very big place. You can see all kinds of lefties. I've never encountered one that's pro-child abuse, right? But I'm sure that actual child predators and pedophiles are probably thankful to Marr because he's now also adding to the chorus of right-wing bigots fear-mongering about queer people, and that's good for them because it it takes the heat off of them. It takes the eyes off of them, draws suspicion away from them and onto a group of innocent people who just want to live their fucking lives. But in conclusion, Bill Maher just didn't sufficiently demonstrate that DeSantis is against the sexualization of kids. I'm sure that he is, if I had to guess, but he didn't make that argument, right? Nor did Bill Maher prove that queer people are in favor of sexualizing kids, nor did he prove that they would disapprove of DeSantis if he actually condemned real child sex abuse. Like, I don't think anyone would be like, DeSantis, shut the fuck up about, about this. Like, this is bad. It's just, it's so absurd to me because like, this is the ultimate straw man. He's not even trying to make a cogent argument, but he's trying to portray himself as an enlightened centrist who's just calling balls and stripes. And he's bold because he can condemn both sides and he's the grown up. But I mean, he is literally just making things up about the left and the right to validate pre-existing biases that he already has about both sides. But that doesn't make him a bold truth teller. It makes him a pathetic hack and not just any type of hack, a conservative hack hack because if you're not even aligned with liberals on basic social issues at this point you're literally just a conservative and i mean if you're promoting the gay predator myth you're a conservative so all that's left for bill maher at this point to do is to just own it because you're not a leftist you're not even a liberal you are just a standard conservative and as soon as trump is out of the equation i'm sure he's just going to be a registered republican because that's really the only thing keeping him from jumping all in with the republican party because he hates trump but i mean you're already there, bud, so you might as well just embrace it. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay pride.